Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast, Lean Six Sigma Bursts, are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. In this episode, I'd like to go back to a discussion around the Taguchi loss function, which is something I highlighted in episode 37. So I'm going to link to that in the notes. But the idea is that there is a optimal performance that your customer is looking for. And I want to share a few examples that I ran across recently in real life that helps you understand this concept a little bit better. So one example I often use in class is around fruit and that there's a ideal time to purchase or consume fruit. If you eat it too early and it's not ripe enough, it doesn't taste as good. And if you let it get too ripe, it may not taste as good as well. And so there's really like an ideal or optimal point when you want to eat the fruit. Same with if you're harvesting fruit is when to pick it. That's what we're trying to do oftentimes in our process is figure out what is the right exact time or performance for our customer and try and hit that consistently over and over again. Typically, we set up thresholds for what is acceptable and you put in limits around that to says, okay, here's the optimum, but we can allow it to be as low as this or as high as this. Those are typically what we strive for. Unfortunately, a lot of organizations focus on those limits and they don't remember that the goal is to hit the optimal or the target. And usually that's right in the middle of the spec limits. So instead of focusing on how do we hit the perfect time of ripeness and make sure that the customers are getting those at that time, they're just saying, oh, this is good enough on the low end and this is okay, not too far on the high end. It's all good, let's just leave it. Uh, Another example I ran across was I went to a hotel and it's part of our travel and we were going to enjoy the pool. However, I felt the pool was too cold. So we got in the water and it just was too cold to enjoy. So I would say in that process that the hotel failed to provide adequate pool temperature. So there was probably a lower limit of temperature that it exceeded, at least for my comfort level. And I don't think I'm too unreasonable. So it's probably something that a lot of the customers uh, felt that was too low because there weren't many people in the pool. And it was a nice day out. So uh, unfortunately, I think they failed and fell below the lower spec limit. But a pool could also have an upper spec limit where the temperature is too hot and it doesn't refresh people, especially on a hot day. It can feel like the temperature is too hot and you're almost sweating. That's rarely the case. I don't see that happen very often, Um, but it could be a possibility. So there would be an upper spec limit for pool temperature and a lower spec limit. But the goal is to hit it right. So there's enough refreshment you get when you get in the pool, but not so much that it's cold and you want to get out right away or not get back in later. And so I think if they were to look at that and measure what is the target or optimum performance of that pool temperature, whether it's 78 degrees or 80 degrees or 82 degrees or 77 and measure how can they hit that. And usually that requires them to put in some kind of heating element, um, which they oftentimes don't invest in. Even the ones that we've seen in heated pools, it doesn't mean that they're managing that temperature very well because it still could be too hot or oftentimes it's still too cold, even with a heated pool. So that's one example. The other one was in our travels through Texas recently, Um, We were very close to the solar eclipse. Let me pause for a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Creative Safety Supply. Creative Safety Supply is a great resource for free guides, infographics, and continuous improvement tools. I recommend starting with their 5S guide. It includes breakdowns of the five pillars, ways to begin implementing 5S, and even organization tips and color charts. From red tags to floor markings, it's all there. Download it for free at creativesafetysupply.com slash 5S. And I th- there's a pathway that was been established called, I think it's pathway of totality, 
which is the ideal place to watch the solar eclipse. It's where you get the most complete eclipse to look at. And this was in October of 2023, recently. So I believe this is where the moon covers up the sun, but not totally. And so there's like a ring of fire around the edge of it. You can't look at it with your eyes during the eclipse because there's still too much sun around it. But when they take photos and videos using special camera lenses, they can, you can see that. I'll dig up a good video that I saw. You can also see it with uh, special glasses, which we did have, so that was pretty cool. But the question in my mind was, well, where do we need to get to to make sure we see the eclipse as best as we can? And wh where do they draw this line and say, this is the pathway? If you think about it from a two Gucci loss function, there's actually a perfect path right in the center that you want to get to, to get the most perfect view of the eclipse. Now they've put on this pathway, basically spec limits that says if you're too far east or too far west, then it's outside the limits. But again, the Taguchi loss function would say, that's a, just a diminishing returns. There is no like cutoff that says, oh, if I step over this line, then it magically gets worse. It's just a little bit worse than five feet to the right or five feet to the left. There's no dramatic change on that pathway. So we were trying to figure out how close can we get to the center, knowing that's the optimal, but not focus so much on just getting into the pathway because there is no magic line that says, oh, I have to drive to this town and then it'll be okay because we were outside, we were staying outside of that zone and thought, well, maybe that's still acceptable. It's still a good view, we don't know. So we decided, why don't we try to get as close to that perfect optimal point to make sure we get the best view. But what is the threshold and the line? You know, is it this pathway or could it have been hundreds of miles in either direction of there? Could we have stayed where we were and still gotten a pretty good view? So it really depends on what is quality to the observer. So I would have liked to have seen two different views of that same eclipse, one from 300 miles away from the perfect line and one right on the line, see how much difference there was. Could I have even seen a difference or noticed a difference? I'm not sure. If I could have, then it made sense that we made a good choice to go and go to the optimal place. Anyway, so I saw that application and I thought, this is an example where someone's tried to put some kind of limits here and said, this is good and bad. So it just makes sense that someone would try to put these kind of limits around that. But again, there is no magic line that says, if, if I'm outside the city limits, then I'm not gonna be able to see the eclipse. But if I drive into town one mile, then I'm gonna see a perfect view. It's not black and white. There's a perfection and then as you get away from that, it gets less and less perfect. We just have to rethink our thoughts around spec limits, that these are not black and white. These are thresholds that we have established that said, this is too far away. And that's why there can be ambiguity and confusion and actually incorrect limits, oftentimes where we're making decisions in our process, good or bad. And we said, well, it's too low or too high but sometimes there's a lot of subjectivity in how those are determined. So again, the goal is how do we strive for perfection and hit that consistently over and over again. And if you do that, then you're gonna have the best performance for your customers. And if you're focused on the right things, they will notice and they'll say, this is better than your competitor who isn't hitting those targets. So definitely go back and listen to the other podcast I had on Taguchi Loss Function if you wanna learn more. If you find some other examples you'd like to share, I'd love to hear those. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms, along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods, and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.